Welcome back folks, Nash Taters here. So today I want to really touch up on the subject while we're watching this wonderful trailer of the game that we've been playing for 70 plus days now on Global. Uh, I think this is the anime trailer that they've done. Now they implement it into the beginning of the game when you just get past the title screen. I think it's wonderfully done. But we're going to talk about something that I was actually planning to do since I decided to start this channel. Now, for those of you who've been supporting me, I want to thank you very much. And for future subscribers, I also want to thank you very much. Uh, a lot of you perhaps checked out my information actually on my YouTube channel uh, during the about section where I wrote I will be reviewing games and doing gameplay of games and strategies of games. Clearly, this is the game that I've been spending the bulk of my time on. But I feel like I need to really reveal some of the other games I've been playing start doing some reviews on them and perhaps even showing off some of content that I want to provide for those games. I don't plan to really make too many videos for those games and I still want to continue to make videos for War of the Visions daily. And I'm actually even thinking about maybe making more than one video um, daily for War of the Visions. It really just depends on the content that's coming out in the future. But I feel like a lot of folks really enjoy the arena videos. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and reveal the first game I'm going to be reviewing this week. And I think I'm going to review almost all the games I'm playing alongside War of Divisions. It's a pretty good game. Actually, it's a really good game. It's a game that's pretty much based off of the anime, The Seven Deadly Sins. As you can see, the graphics of the game. This pretty much looked like it was taken from the anime itself. Right now, we're having the 100-day global release special. So there's a lot of events going on and whatnot. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the combat system in the game. The way this game works is, let's do a quick combat session. So the way this game works is like this. You will basically need to pick a team of four members. And here are the four members. And then, let me see if I can pick one of my... Uh, stronger team so this is my probably my stronger teams so you pick a four members and then this is how much stamina it takes right up here this is your player rank and these are your companions that you can bring with you uh, the combat system is essentially a card battle game so what happens is each character has cards in ultimate move each character has two skills dedicated by their cards and here are the cards. So it's basically also off of a star system for each skill. You will select a card and you put it into these slots and then your characters, according to the card that you inputted, will execute those skills. You can actually increase the ranking of your card set like this and now it will take it to two stars. And if you hold, hold on to the card, it will tell you that it has additional skill. For example, this one says disable recovery skills for one turn. So if I was to reset it now, it just says 220% attack. So let's go ahead and just do one real quick. So you click on your, your enemy, you click it. So you obviously only can use three cards. So I will, actually I'm gonna redo this. I'm gonna go ahead and just attack him with this card, this card, and then I'll go ahead and form the next card so as you can see basically simple turn-based system your entire team goes first or your opponent's team goes first depending on the total combat score of your team it starts for C it stands is a cc i'm not really sure what it stands for but i'm guessing for sure it st st uh, stands for combat something uh, let's see here you can go just attack him and now i'm going to just go ahead and show you what happens if i do three stars now three stars you can do more damage and of course it adds one more turn on your disable recovery skill so let's do that and see what it looks like now my, char my characters are pretty strong they're at max level level 80 is the new new max and so right now all my characters that i leveled up that i feel like are the, my stronger characters i got them to level 80. now i'm just going to set on auto and just let let the computer do its thing while i talk so basically this game has a campaign slash story mode. I believe it's up to eight or nine chapters. 
I'm really just taking my time playing this game. I really enjoy this game because, like I said, this game is basically redoing the whole anime. The anime currently is on Netflix. It runs for three seasons, and I believe it's finished. So by playing the story mode of this game, it's as if you're actually immersed into the anime itself. You're watching a lot of cutscenes, a lot of story, and once in a while during the story, you actually get to engage in battles by utilizing some of the characters during that specific scene. And other times you actually use the team that you've been leveling up. So it's a good mixture of combat during story mode. So it's very cool and unique in that sense. Uh, let's talk about quality of life. Quality of life in this game has improved drastically since the last patch. There's been a lot of implementations of things that are trying to make this game a little better. Um, one of the things they implemented is auto, I guess you call it skip tickets. So if you're referring to World Divisions, we use skip tickets. So in this one, they just introduced skip tickets. And you can earn them by kind of like a chokeable expedition. You send your team out. I already did yesterday's. So you see, you just get rewards simply by sending your team out. So you'll dispatch a team like this, much like the chokeable expedition. Dispatch. So very simple. And then each time you dispatch, you get one of these tickets, the stage auto clear ticket, as they like to call it. These are obviously invaluable, especially if you're kind of short on time during your uh, time of play. You may want to just use those to kind of meet the dailies. And speaking of the dailies, the game does have daily quests, daily cat tasks, as they call it. Uh, basically, you, you meet some requirements, you get some nice currency for the game. One of the best things about this game is the dailies are increased. See this little number here, seven? That number will go up based on how far you progress through the story and your rewards will increase. That's something a lot of old gacha games don't do because this is one of the games I believe that's introducing this concept. I think it's very cool. Um, the fact that your rewards goes up as you progress through the story, that seems a bit, uh, you know, nice. And, um, so I think a lot of future gacha games should really try to uh, improve that. Imagine if you log into a game that you've been playing for three years and it's the same tired, crappy rewards you've been uh, getting since like day one of your release of your game, right? My personal honest opinion about dailies, I think all games should get rid of them because instead of trying to give you daily quests due, I think there should just be a, a war system in the game that pops up based on what you want to do in the game. What I mean by that is I'm not a huge fan of PvP and gacha games and mobile games in general. I don't think they're very attractive to me. I don't usually do them. And if I do, it's so simply because to fulfill my tasks. Uh, the way I feel like is you should be rewarded based on what you want to do in the game, right? For example, if their way of trying to attract you to play the game is to give you daily tasks to do, and you stop logging into the game, none of that stuff matters anyways. But if you log into the game, that means you wanna play the game, right? So therefore, if you're playing the game, you get to choose how you wanna play the game. For example, today maybe I just wanna farm for equipment. The more equipment I farm, these task rewards should start popping up as I start uh, playing more and more during, while you know logging into the game. So maybe one way to implement that is you know, the duration of how long you log into the game or simply as you are doing more farming, the game tracks your progress in terms of how many battles you've done, whatever. And then this, these lists of items will show up based on how many of them you, how many you have done. Instead of saying, hey, you need to do two PVP matches, you need to do dungeon, you need to do yada, 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 right? It's, I think it's stupid. I think it's so old. It's such an old formula. They honestly, all companies need to consider just getting rid of the tasks. That was one of the biggest reasons why I quit a lot of MMOs because they started making you do tasks. It seems like I'm logging in just to do tasks. You know, it's been like two hours doing tasks instead of just really enjoying whatever I want to enjoy for that day, that play session. So other things that you can do in this game, you have a battle system for special events. You have special dungeons, which basically are your dungeons that you grind for your evolving materials and leveling up potions, experience potions, and then of course gold as your currency. So 
the beautiful thing about this game is just like World of Visions, you don't actually have to wait on certain days. Again, that's a really hard ass formula that a lot of companies still use. I think it's so old, dude. Why do I have to wait till Tuesday to farm something or Wednesday to farm something? That's stupid. They really need to fix that in, I think, all gotcha games. Uh, another thing you could do is Ray Battle. They call them Final Boss. It's a really hard boss you have to beat. And there's a ladder system. Like, the higher scores you can put in, then the better rewards you can get. And the re rewards are cumulative, right? For example, if you got a point, one point in the, in the fight, you get something. If you got two points, you also get the one point reward on top of the two point reward, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty cool in that way. These boss battles are basically uh, the way to trigger raid bosses. So the game is designed that there are different episodes in the game or chapters. Upon the completion of each chapter, you have access to the end boss. So uh, usually what happens is the chapters will introduce characters that you must fight during that specific chapter. So these boss stages, basically you have to encounter and fight those characters that were introduced during that chapter. Upon completing these chapter bosses, you have a chance up here, the percentage chance to trigger the death match. It's basically the raid battle, uh, which a giant demon will come out once you reach a 100%, and then you can kill that demon to get some nice rewards. Of course, here's the PvP system. The PvP system is kind of unique in that there's two separate ladders you can climb. One is you get to equip your gear. The other one is you don't have, you cannot equip any gear or as they call it, equipment in this game. So it's kind of cool in that way that you get to choose. And I think in the future, they're introducing three team versus three teams. As you can see, these things are still being worked on by the company. So yeah, you have a lot of choices, a lot of things to do. One of my biggest gripes is about gotcha games in general is they're all about the same, right? You always have guild dungeons, you always have guild bosses, you always have raids. PvP, it's all the same tired ass formula. I mean, I guess that's kind of part of the the genre of games I play, and unfortunately, they're pretty much all the same. So really, at the end of the day, you, when you choose gotcha games, you just choose the ones that you know that meets the most number of points of criteria for you, right? If you enjoy the combat, if you enjoy the characters, if you enjoy the story, etc. Because, like I said, they're pretty much all the same end of the day you're just choosing the one that appeals to you the most uh there's guilds they're called knighthood is run actually by my friend she, she goes by elaine bennis uh basically in in guild battle this because this game let's talk about a little bit more about the background of the story this game is pretty much based off of like arthur and merlin and the whole knights of the round table kind of story with some like religion stuff thrown in it's called the seven daily sins after all so it's kind of neat that you know you have these round tables kind of kind of kind of a good homage to the to their legend right and so this is your knighthood so you get to hang out in this big hall where your your guildies are just hanging out and you can kind of you can physically see the character they're representing and here's your guild battle portal so you go in here and you fight some raid some guild boss here's me this is like the best ranked uh, player in this guild. Because our guild is kind of like a very casual guild. And it's, I'm probably like the most quote unquote hardcore player in this guild. So that's why um, my ranking is pretty high. And uh, you can check in every day. You get nice items. Uh, you can contribute to the guild to increase the level of the guild, which can open up shops. So you'll go here. I'm not going to bother showing you everything. Because I want to keep this video kind of short. Uh, there's summoning system i won't summon anything but i kind of show you how this works so this is your basically your your normal quote unquote default banner so as you summon characters in this game duplicates could be converted to coins so you got your rarity coin right this is the highest rarity the ssr coins the next one is the gold or the sr coins and then you have your silver the, the r coins and then you, your friendship. So if you're using your friend's character, you get coins as well. So you can convert your rare character coins to buy SR character coins. Or characters, actually. The, the reason they look like this is because I already own their, the first copy of the character. So this is actually a representation of a coin. To show you that what it doesn't look like, it shows you the actual portrait. 
So you can use, use the SR character coins to buy SSR tickets. And then if you have overflow of SSR units like duplicate, then you can buy stronger other SSR characters in the game. Um, so it's kind of cool. Like it, it makes you feel like when you summon, you're not wasting anything. And you can also use those coins to buy potions to restore your stamina, which is what a lot of people recommend you doing. So again, the tavern is kind of unique. It's basically my restaurant. You can actually cook in this game. And the cooking will boost up stats for your team, especially when you're encountering uh, harder content. So it's kind of cool. As you can see, I'm very relaxed in playing this game. I'm only on episode 143. I think that's right at end of chapter eight, I want to say, maybe chapter seven. And I think there's nine chapters. So I'm just taking my time. I just kind of enjoy farming in this game. It's just something to do. And uh, I realized pretty much this type of game, gotcha game, the end game is for a lot of people is arena, right? Especially for whales, you know, it's kind of a good way to flex as people call it nowadays. Just show off all your most maxed out units and just kind of go to town against each other. But for me, I feel like my end game is still in the PVE aspect where I get to just farm all day just for stuff that I really like. I'm a big hoarder. I love to hoard things in, in RPGs. So I have a large amount of things I just like to hoard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just love looking at my list to see I have so many items. So my motivation in playing this game is just to kind of farm. I enjoy seeing chest drops and things like that. And a lot of times this game, you can totally play casually. And I'm 100% free to play player. And I have some pretty good units. Pretty much have the units that everybody want. Like this guy, uh, this character. There's another one, This not this one, this character. And I think there's a couple other ones, but I just have all the ones that people, everybody wants. And there's a lot of ones that I skip. And there's even a lot of events that I skip because again, one of the biggest problem with gotcha game is once you have, once you reach a certain point in the game, you're gonna be overflowing with items. And eventually all the incentive of playing events, all the motivation, all the drive is gone because you don't really need more of the same stuff that you already have tons of, right? Why are you playing it? To give stuff that you don't really use anymore? A lot of these events are really good to, to do when you're like a beginner or whatnot. And as a quote unquote veteran player, I've been playing this game for obviously 100 days. So it's like, eh, I whatever. I just play the game just to kind of like do things. But there's plenty of guides out there. Um, I did talk about how there's some controversies with this game with YouTubers and, and the company itself. There's a lot of bad management for this game, but they're trying to improve. And I think the YouTubers are calmed down too. So I think even though there's two wrongs, doesn't make one right, but both sides seem to be calming down a lot more. I think people are more happy with this game, but end of the day, it's just one of the games I'm playing. Uh, if you do enjoy this game, you know, awesome. Put a comment saying why you like about it, whatever. But if you haven't played this game, I, I will recommend checking it out. So I am going to rate this game. Um, I'm going to use my new system. It's going to be called the Wolfpack Tater system. Uh, it's going to be based off of five stars. And instead of calling a stars, I'm going to call it taters. Okay. So if it's one tater, obviously it's bad. If it's five taters, it's going to be really good. So for me, I'm going to rate this game four taters out of five taters, which means that I strongly recommend you download it. I strongly recommend you play the game for as long as you feel like you want to keep playing. I think this game does have a pretty long lifespan, uh, but eventually with all gotcha games, you're gonna hit a wall where you just kind of like lose your motivation to log in, et cetera, et cetera. But I feel like this is one of those games you might actually enjoy playing for a really good bit. I don't know if you're gonna reach years or whatever, but at least for many months is my honest opinion. So four out of five taters, I think it's, it's a good rating for this game. And uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, I'm still going to release other contents, obviously, with, with War of Divisions, but I just feel like brushing up on some of the other games I'm playing. I might also start releasing some content with the other games I'm playing every so often. So that way, kind of just like, you know, you know, when I run out of content to do for the day for my main game, War of Divisions, I could just throw some other content that I feel like may be uh, worthy of sharing with the community. So, all right, until next time. Take care of yourself and your family. Nash Taters out.